Hi there and welcome. Today we are taking a look at what is inside the DW Instec GDS 806S oscilloscope. I've been using this oscilloscope for about, uh, I don't know, maybe five or somewhere between five or ten years, I'm not quite sure. Um, and uh, it's still working great, but the LCD display uh, is uh, starting to flicker a little, a little bit. So today I'm going to open it and uh, see whether I can swap out the backlight tube. As you can see, this is a two-channel digital storage scope with a bandwidth of, uh, I think, 60 MHz. Um, I've been using this, as I said, for a really long time, uh, mostly because uh, it's been, been uh, serving my needs well and also because it is so user-friendly. Uh, I did a video earlier about the Rigol DS1054Z uh, and uh, basically this scope here, although it's two-channel and black and white, it has none of the problems that the Rigol has. Every input has its own voltage per division um, adjustments and it has a horizontal adjustment over here. And uh, every function there is, there's a, there's a button for it. So uh, during normal use it's really, really quick. Uh, you can sit with your head buried in some circuit and just look up for a few seconds and press the button and back down again. So yeah, I really like this oscilloscope a lot. But uh, yeah, the LCD screen has a few problems. Uh, mostly because I think I've been using it uh, when I was living in the tropics. But hopefully the problem is minimal because the scope is really working very well. And it's only the backlight that has some problems. So first of all, I'll just show you the problem. Um, there we go. And uh, if we can just tilt it up a little bit and switch it on. Actually it has some feet, so I'll just put it on those feet and uh, there you have it. And uh, yeah, of course today the screen is nice. After leaving it on for a bit it actually started flickering. So the problem is really there. So yeah, here we are. Uh, get it open. While we're looking at the back here, there's a connector for a serial port and one that is called a Cal. Uh, this BNC here, I'm not sure what that is for. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of cutouts in the back uh, that is not being used in this version. So, there we go. Should be able to lift that thing up. Yep, off it comes. And uh, uh, it's, it's basically empty. There's a switch mode power supply, a really big one, and a fan. And, uh, and down here, inside here, is the LCD display and the button. And uh, oh, there we go. There we have it on the back here. Uh, there is the oscilloscope itself. Um, if we just do a quick tour, obviously in front here there's a metal can. This is uh, all the sensitive input circuit. Um, there is here a lot of uh, voltage regulators and something down here that could look like a trigger circuit. Um, then we have some glue logic and uh, I think this is an A to D but I, I'm wondering why that is external to the metal can but it could look like it. Uh, it's an analog device chip anyway. And uh, then we have a Silent Spartan which is a FPGA of course um, with some uh, high speed RAM. Over here is a Motorola 68000 series uh, micro uh, CPU with its own RAM and flash and uh, a chip here that I'm, I, I don't recognize. Um, but Anyway, that's it really. Um, we have to take off the front panel to get to the LCD display. So it's on the
Das ist die Wir fahren auf, das Das ist das hier. Jetzt muss. Los. Und los. 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 Okay, there is a wire that goes to this uh, oscilloscope test clip. So let's just uh, desolder that one. The soldering iron is now hot and uh, the wire has been removed. And whoops, we should be able to now flip it over and remove all the wires down here and yeah we're almost in there are some plastic clips here that we need to remove um, I'm not sure what I can get under there there we go easy peasy yep and under here we have the backlight tube is sitting in a little reflector uh, sitting in sitting in a little reflector thing yeah so we'll just cut it out uh, okay the pink end and the white end up here and we can pull it out there we go doesn't look worn or anything, but uh, let's just try and swap it out. Um, so the new one, let's just uh, remove the insulation here. On the white one. And on the pink one. There we go. Yep, and here's the new one. It's exactly the, the right length. And it comes with some... Um, gotta be a little bit careful. There we go. It's exactly the right length and it comes with uh, some wires for attaching the thing. Um, yep, yeah, so we'll just solder that in. Um, it's pretty straightforward. First we'll turn the wire here. Oh, that's not easy. Okay, tin that pink one and uh, tin the white one. Okay, there we go. And then uh, solder it together. Okay, on one end. And on the other end, and uh, put this cover over it as well. This is fiddly work. The first one is in. Well, well, that is really fiddly. There we go. It sits okay, I guess. Let's just apply power and see if we have any any light here. connector that's it and 
let's power it on and check whether the backlight has improved. Guess you can see it here. So switch it on. There we go. And how does it look? Yeah, it looks bright and crisp. My new backlight seems to have uh, done the job. Yeah, pretty good. It's definitely usable. Contrast is down. It's flickering. It's flickering a little bit when the contrast is down, but that could be because of uh, the 50 hertz net. Let's uh, switch off the light here and. Uh, yeah, the flicker up here. There's a little bit of flicker though. But it looks good. It's much better than before. So yeah, that's good. I'll consider it repaired. So let's just put on the cover again. And it plugs in this way. Should just slide right in. Uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, I'll put back the screws. So yeah, that's it. Uh, consider it, consider it fixed. And uh, oh yeah, thank you for watching.